So we we called you back in here. Obviously, Brian Laundry, the uh, tragedy uh, murder that had happened with his uh, fiance girlfriend, uh, Gabby Petito. It's a worldwide known case, and it has uh, web sleuths and people, internet detectives all over the world looking at this case. Uh, hundreds of millions of people view this. Um, you know, we received back from District 12 the um, ex medical examiner's report along with the forensic anthropologist. Um, I want to just little, maybe talk about a little bit of what goes on in uh, a situation like this, an exam like this. I know we spoke about it on the last uh, get together, but some, for some of the new people coming on in or just stumbling across this, what does a forensic anthropologist do when they get bones of any kind, whether it's a partial skull? partial, you know, um, you know, where you don't have full um, uh, skeletal remains. How do you go about this stuff? Just let the, uh, the audience know, maybe just in layman's terms, how this all uh, gets married together. Well, essentially, you want to recreate before there was any type of trauma. Uh, you kind of want to put everything back together to understand something about who this person might be, age, ancestry, sex, stature, all these types of things. You want to provide for law enforcement a biological assessment or a profile if they don't know who the victim is or who the decedent is. And part of that analysis is trauma analysis. Uh, bone keeps a memory of everything that happens to it, as you saw in that thing I did a decade ago. Uh, and so anything that happens to that individual is going to be secured in the memory of that bone. And postmortem time, or from death to discovery is not gonna erase it. And one of the key things that the pathologist needs to know for them to fulfill their requirement, their responsibility of talking about cause and manner of death is that anthropologist keying in on that skeleton to make sense of any type of trauma, any type of blunt force, sharp force, or ballistic trauma, or anything that could be accidental. And so that's primarily what the anthropologist is up to in providing information for the pathologist. Self-inflicted uh, gunshot wound of the head. Now, if if they did suicide by putting the gun in the mouth, would that still be consistent with that terminology or would it say um, through the mouth? It, the, you know, again, that's for the forensic dentist uh, to become a consultant uh, as far as looking at the dentition, but the trauma to the dentition um, can be a telltale sign of that, you know, type of uh, type of behavior as well so right. and the, and the exit wound can be a little bit different different right. placement if you have an exit wound on the back of the head it probably came from the front or the side something like that so okay and then that bullet if it's a penetrating bullet would then traverse throughout the cavity of the skull and possibly create additional ballistic impact damage on the inside of the skull on another part based on its trajectory uh, sometimes the trajectory could uh, destabilize inside of the brain once it makes entry right and then exactly. go to other right and then leave you more evidence inside on the bone yep exactly yep mm -hmm. dr murray marks here uh is this somewhat standard of what you'd see as released in a uh, a criminal investigation that's still ongoing and active it really brings up uh, the, the six points seen response by medical examiner which is standard complete examination and recovered skeletal remains. Now it's saying remains plural. That means we have more than just a partial skull, uh, but it doesn't list it here. Is this common to just be, uh, when it, it's an active investigation, to be kind of secretive about what the remains are? It just says skeletal remains. Yeah, it, it is. Um, you know, again, that's up, that's up to the, uh, the type of uh, relationship the forensic anthropologist and forensic pathologist have. Some pathologists, you know, might want to release something, you know, right. prior to the anthropologist's final report. Um, it just depends. And the anthropologist, you know, a lot of times can go through the details of a report or excuse right. me, the details of their examination and not include it in a report. Uh, board certified forensic anthropologists write reports of all different um, stripes. So they can be you know, very detailed or they can be, you know, pretty broad. So uh, again, it's not uncommon to see that, um, but the pathologist knows exactly what was found and what the right. forensic anthropologist did. Right. And, and, and line three goes over what you talked about, consultation with the forensic odontologist 
including dental comparison for identification. Um, so that's your, you know, I think that's kind of like what the gold standard for identification. Uh, I think I heard someone yeah, say that. Yeah. 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 Pretty, pretty much, you know, 70, maybe 80% of your identifications are going to come from the dentition. And again, while an anthropologist knows teeth, it's the forensic dentist that actually makes that uh, identification. Really, it's the pathologist that makes the confirmation. The dentist gives all that information to the pathologist the same way the anthropologist does. So again, yeah, that is standard, standard protocol for the dentist to uh, be the primary source for the identification of the victim. And I think this uh, press release was done in consultation with the FBI, and I believe the FBI had a, a big hand in how it was worded. So we may not know, uh, you know, if they have or don't have a suicide note found in that notebook or some other uh, writings. You're, you're thinking just the way I was thinking, and that's why I was asking the Dr. Marks if this was common the way this is written out. Uh, I haven't looked at many of these, but you know, from doing this for about three years uh, with covering true crime, I haven't seen a report quite um, as well, basic as this. Well, this isn't really a report. I've you yeah. know, I've seen, I've read postmortem um, exams uh, before, and this this isn't it. This is just right. a simple press release. Now, this line six confirmation of the identity uh, of the remains by both dental and uh, comparison and DNA analysis. The DNA analysis, uh, is that coupled in with the dental comparison or uh, is that the DNA analysis from the anthropologist? Well, the, D the DNA analysis really takes place somewhere else. There are anthropologists that are very um, uh, astute with that, uh, that take part in those labs uh, that do that type of work. Um, and there are you know, forensic dentists that know that material as well. But primarily it's a separate thing. So it may or not be included in the odontology report once a manner has been released can it be changed at a later date good question have you ever seen that i've not seen i've not seen that done uh most uh most pathologists you know they they're pretty sure what they're dealing with and they'll you know weigh everything things take time some reports take longer than others they pretty much have it down. I've never seen it change like you, Ed. I haven't seen that change before. Folks from Australia, Dr. Murray has a question for you because when he was down under, he was called a specific name and he wants to know if oh, there's no. any meaning to it. Doc? Okay, so I was down there as a visiting professor and several of them called me Muzza. Is that a, um, is, is that kind of a shortened nickname for Murray? Okay, Muzza. So he was called Muzza when he was over in Australia. So uh, any of my uh, Australian friends have anything? Is that like a, is that a good word? Was somebody saying something bad about him? We want to know. Um, uh -oh. Brave question, says Molly. Um, so it's a nickname. Uh, white, who said that? Uh, white Witch. Uh, Sarah said it's a nickname. Uh, I don't know if she's from Australia, but she's saying it's slang for your name. Okay, here, oh. she's from Australia. So it says slang for your last name, I'd say. Um, so they, the, the, these folks knew your first and last name, obviously. So, they did, yeah. Well, it was, my, it was my friend Ian who was on your program. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. He, he's yeah. either laughing at us right now watching or he's <laughs> saying, oh, okay, this is good that they're asking about that. So Smee says it means handsome and intelligent. <laughs> I'll well, take that. <laughs> there you go the great doctor has taken it he's taken that dr murray marks what do you like to do on your uh your spare time do you golf do what do you what is a what's a forensic anthropologist do i mean I, i'm sorry for that question but people want to know um uh, i bike a lot i run um you know don't run as much as i used to but you know the uh, like to stay yeah wow type of thing, but mostly uh, mostly biking and, and things of that sort. So, excellent, yeah. excellent. We don't want to be fed answers that aren't truthful, uh, and that's where things go askew. You know, you don't. The worst part about fake book, and I call Facebook fake book, is because some of the things that stir up in there, some of it is good, but a lot of it is not, and people just run with that, and they say, "Oh, I saw this. Someone speaking about this," and it's just the furthest thing from the truth.
So just be careful on that. Um, again, that's one of the primary reasons why here at Crime Time with Duty Ron, and if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. We bring professionals like Dr. Murray Marks on to speak to you from a professional perspective. You know, he, this, he is a forensic anthropologist. I don't know, you know, again, I don't know what the media is doing out there, but I haven't seen anybody in, in this capacity come on and speak about it. Um, so it's important that we understand that the value of somebody like him, like Dr. Marks here is tremendous. Um, and it gives us, uh, again, in layman's terms, what the possibilities are, what the overview of an examination of this type with skeletal remains, what it entails. And I think he's covered that in these these two videos that we've done very well. So I thank you for that, doctor.